<coughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Keith here. Hoping everybody's having a good day. Enjoying life, living life, loving life. I want to get on and talk to everybody today about international law and how it extends to all the different jurisdictions. If you know how to apply yourself in that jurisdiction in that international law. And so I'm going to show you a little bit of Wikipedia. I said many times before, Wikipedia isn't the source or the ultimate source or anything like that, but it is a good source to get a generalized view of things. So let's see if we can do this here. We're going to start off, and I'm just going to go through this kind of this part kind of quick because if you look at the top of the thing, I've got a bunch of other pages I want to go through make some brief little comments and as we see over here a little slide bar that's a little little square and it shows that that's a long page so there's a lot of information here and I'm not going to sit here and read the whole thing but I do want to read a portion of it and first thing I want to note says uh, international law from Wikipedia the free encyclopedia and it says, Law of Nations redirects here. For the 18th century political treaties, see the Law of Nations. So there's a distinction already in the very top of the page between Law of Nations and the Law of Nations. And when they're talking about the Law of Nations, you see they're talking about the, 14, the 18th century political treaties. So that would be like the origin... And law of nations is referring to the now time is what they call law of nations. So it's just a uh, conformed set of law of nations derived from the original law of nations. International law, all, also known as public international law and law of nations, is the set of rules, norms, and standards generally accepted in relations between nations. A nation is a stable community of humans formed on the basis of a common language, territory, history, ethnicity or psychological makeup manifested in common culture. It establishes normative guidelines and a common conceptual framework to guide states across a broad range of domains including war, diplomacy, trade, and human rights. Including war is your admiralty, or excuse me, um, your uh, land, your, your uh, land jurisdiction. Diplomacy is your air jurisdiction. Trade is your maritime and human rights are involved in all three of those 
International law, law allows for practice of stable, consistent, and organized international relations. The sources of international law. Oops, didn't mean to click on that. The sources of international law, also known as law of nations, is the name of a body of rules which regulate the conduct of sovereign states in their relations with another. Regulate the conduct of sovereign states in their relations with another with one another and include international custom is an aspect of international law involving the principle of custom. General state practice accepted as law. General state practice accepted as law. Treaties and general principles of law recognized by most national legal systems. International law may also be reflected in international comity. Is a practice among different political entities involving the mutual Recognition of legislative, executive, and judicial acts. Today, they're only allowing us to recognize the judicial acts in these courts and re reneging on the legislative and executive part, thereby, thereby denying comity in that relation of mutual recognition. Okay? Notice they use the word reflected here. That's mirrored. The person is always a mirror. The practices and customs adopted by states to maintain good relations and mutual recognition, such as saluting the flag of a foreign ship. They're saluting the flag of America. And yet here it says, such as saluting the flag of a foreign ship. Or enforcing a foreign legal judgment. In law, the enforcement of foreign judgments is the recognition and enforcement in one jurisdiction of judgments rendered in another foreign jurisdiction. The Bible has already given judgments down for every jurisdiction that exists. It is recognized and enforced in those jurisdictions already. International law differs from state-based legal systems. International law differs from state-based legal systems. In law, comity is a practice among different political entities. State-based political entity is a legal system in that it is primarily, though not exclusively, applicable to countries rather than individuals and operates largely, largely through consent. Has to be a contract, folks. No other way around it. There must be a contract. Since there is no universally accepted authority to enforce it upon sovereign states. Westphalian sovereignty or state sovereignty is a principle in international law that each state has exclusive sovereignty over its territory. Territory. Okay, before we get into territory, I'm going to finish up here real quick. Because it goes on to say, Consequently, 
states may choose to not abide by international law and even to break a treaty. However, such violations, particularly of customary international law and preemptory norms, A peremptory norm is a fundamental principle of international law that is accepted by the international community of states as a norm from which no derogation is permitted. No derogation is permitted. Remember, I said up here um, about the Bible. is a principle of international law that's that each state has exclusive sovereignty. That comes from the Bible, people. The sovereignty is not yours. It belongs to someone else. We'll talk about that here in a minute. You do not have sovereignty. You have duty to a sovereign. And it says, goes on, it says, uh, particularly a customary international law and peremptory norms can be met with coercive action ranging from military intervention to diplomatic and economic pressures. Remember up here I told about I talked about the uh, uh, including war, diplomacy, trade. Those are your three jurisdictions. We see them again, ranging from military intervention to diplomatic and economic. Okay. So let's look at Tory territory in regards to territory. Terry being the uh, uh, root of terrestrial. Tory, an outlaw. So when you're in a territory, you're an outlaw. Terrestrial Tory, terrestrial outlaw. You are an outlaw of the land if you submit to a territory. It's going to go on to show us something else here that, that, that uh, should wake you guys up. Specifically, one of a class of Irish robbers noted for outrages and savage cruelty, originally a plunderer, originally pursuer, searcher, from old Irish, Turigim, uh, I pursue, from Toyer, pursuit, from Celtic, Turret, a running up to, from Pyru R E T to run, roll, see rotary, rotary. About 1646, it emerged as a derogatory term for Irish Catholics dispossessed of their dispossessed of their land. Term for Irish Catholic dispossessed of their land. Now you know what his Tory is. It is the one that came in and dispossessed you of your land and wrote their his Tory because they were victorious. Vic being change. Tory we're going to see down here is going to mean traitor. Traitor. So when we come to be a victor, we have changed traitor. We are a traitor to change, some of whom subsequently turned to outlawry, applied by exclusioners to supporters of the Catholic Duke of York. In his succession to the throne of England after 1689, Tory was the name of a British political party. 1689, Tory was the name of a British political party, at first composed of Yorkist Tories of 1680, superseded uh, circa 1830 by conservative. That's where our conservative party today came from, though it continues to be used colloquially, colloquial, colloquially as an adjective from 1680s. In American history, Tory was the name given after 1769 to colonists who remained loyal to the crown. In 
It represents their relative position in the pre-revolutionary English political order in the colonies. The Conservative Party. Okay? A Tory has been properly defined to be a traitor in thought, but not in deed. Your actions speak louder than your words. Again, I will reiterate it over and over again. Your actions speak louder than words. A Tory has been properly defined to be a traitor in thought, but not in deed. <clears throat> so if you're a Tory, you're a traitor in thought. You can... People can look at you and think that you're a fair, square, shooting chum all they want. But when you look in that mirror and you look inside yourself and you find you're not following his word, you're a Tory. Now, if you're doing the best you can to follow his word and somehow things keep getting screwed up out there, that's not a Tory. That's not a traitor. You're following your his words the best you can. Then you're accepting the changes. You're not victory. He's the victory. He's the one that's going to put the changes out before you all the time. He's going to challenge you. All the time. You have to be able to accept those changes. When you become a traitor to change and decide you want to sit in your cognitive dissonance and take upon the conveniences of life of a community instead of being nomadic and moving about and traveling along, which we'll get into here later, um, then you're a Tory. You're, you're subjecting yourself to a set of circumstances to provide comfort in existing in the same realm day in and day out, following a certain schedule so that things don't change. You're doing the same thing every day. You've gone out and you've gotten a J-O-B, and you're required to be at that J-O-B at a certain time. And at that certain time, you're required to do, start doing certain things until another certain time. Okay, so let's finish up with this real quick. Then we'll get on to the next one. It says, a Tory has been properly defined to be a traitor in thought, but not in deed. The only description by which the laws have endeavored to come, endeavored to come at them was that a non-jurors, that of non-jurors or persons refusing to take the oath of fidelity to the state. Why? Why? Because if you've already taken the oath that he pro provided for you, and you stick with that, that, that oath in thought, then you can't take an oath of fidelity to a state. You've already accepted an oath to him. Period. Okay. So when we go back to all of this stuff here, we're seeing that everything is economic pressure. They always talk, they, they mention this other stuff, hoping you'll go over that. And the last resounding emphasis will be the ec economics. The relationship and interaction between a national legal system, municipal law, domestic or internal law of a sovereign state to find an opposition to international law. What this is telling us is that even at the local level, even at the smallest level, the individual has as much sovereign duties and powers as the entire international community because they are one and the same. They have their sources of international law, which is the name of a body of rules which regulate the conduct of sovereign states in their relationship with one another. That is what the international law is, source of international law. And then they want to go down here and talk about municipal law is the national, domestic, or internal law of a sovereign state defined in opposition to international law. 
So municipal law supposedly is in opposition of international law, but they both have the same source, and that is the, the, the sovereign. It has to come from the sovereign. As it is written, is that, as, it, as it is written, so shall it be. It's already written. And like I said, this, this goes on and on. This is a lot of reading. But when we get down here to the see also part, and we see natural law is a system of law that purports to be based on values intrinsic to human nature that can be deduced and applied independent of positive law. When they're talking positive law, they're talking about their laws, their list of international uh, laws and stuff, treaties and all that that have to be positively aligned with nature. If they're not positively aligned with nature, then they are not laws. They have a negative effect, then they cannot be a law. According to natural law theory, all people have inherent rights conferred not by act of legislation, but by God. When you are born, you are an act of God. Period. As I said, anything with their laws, it always tends to be end up in the uh, commercial realm, economics. And when we look at arbitration, it says arbitration is a form of alternative dispute resolution, denotes a wide range of dispute resolution process and techniques that act as means of dis for disagreeing parties to come to an agreement short of litigation. Short of litigation, which means is a way to resolve disputes outside the courts. Short of litigation, a way to resolve disputes outside the court. The courts are public venues, people. Keep it outside of the courts. Keep it private. Let them know they are advancing upon a private entity through a public venue and not doing it through the proper diplomatic channels of notice. In this contract, they are in fact operating under trust and must get a hold of the trustee. They must contact the trustee, not the beneficiary or the grantee. They must go through the trustee. In these realms, all of it, whether it come from a state or the United States, they must go through the United States person. Period. When we go to chapter 9 of the United States Code, it is the Arbitration Code. Arbitration right there at the top. General provisions. And it starts out with maritime transactions. And commerce. Defined. Exception to operation of title. And I'm not going to go through and read all these, but there are a couple I want to hit on. Now, appointment of arbitrators or umpire. In the agreement provision be made in or if in the agreement provision be made for a method of naming or appointing an arbitrator or arbitrators or an umpire, such methods shall be followed. Read that. <laughs> but if no method be provided therein, or if a method be provided and any party thereto shall fail to avail himself of such method, or if for any other reason there shall be a lapse in the naming of an arbitrator, or arbitrators or umpire, or in filing a vacancy, then upon the application of either party to the controversy, the court shall designate and appoint an arbitrator or arbitrators or umpire. Now, if arbitration is a form of alternative dispute resolution, and they're going to the court first, isn't that proof that they have violated process of due law or due process of law? 
If they go to the court and announce a court case first without contacting the United States representative, the trustee, who is then, through diplomatic channels, supposed to notice yourself, that somebody else in the state, in their relations with you, have filed a suit, rather than applied for a private arbitrator, in naming that? See, this is supposed to be a process where we're supposed to come together and, and name a private arbitrator if there what isn't one already named in the contract. All contracts are provided for a, a implication of arbitration, even if it's not written into the contract. So these people are taking it that if it's not written into the contract, they're just going to take you to court, and that's a violation of due process of law. Period. There is alternative dispute resolution forms. Okay, let me go back here. There's another thing. Before we go any further, it says contracts not affected. Remember what I was telling you. These are trusts. Every contract they involve themselves with is in fact a trust. This one here just says this title shall not apply to contracts made prior to January 1st, 1926. This title shall not apply to contracts made prior to January 1st, 1986. My ass. Contracts are vitiated for fraud. Now, if they, if they are saying this is not to, does not apply to contracts made prior to 1926, and I want to find a different um, uh, uh, resolution than to take them to court, then I should have the ability to enforce that fraud or in, enforce that contract for the consideration and benefit that I'm supposed to receive out of it that I have not received out of it yet. No contract can ever, for reasons of possible fraud, not apply unless it is finalized in perfection, with perfection. And we'll see that here in a bit too. Inapplicability of the Act of State Doctrine. Act of State redirects here for others. other use to see State Act disambiguation. State Act is your, your statutes and stuff, and they're going to show you all kinds of statutes. But this is specifically the Act of State Doctrine, or Foreign Act of State Doctrine, is a principle in English and United States law which states that every sovereign state is bound to respect the independence of every other sovereign state. That's your relationship right there. They are bound as sovereigns themselves to respect the independence of the other sovereign. Period. And the courts will not sit in judgment of another government's acts or act of any sovereign national done within its own territory. Within its own territory. Why you have to take them out of their territory and let them know they are the traitor according to the ecclesiastical territory of dominion. When we're talking about dominion, we're talking about ancient documents. And when we're talking about ancient documents and their records and their opinions and their courts and their resolutions and everything, check this out. This is Rule 803 of the Federal Rules of Evidence. Evidence. When you fill out the SS5 application and they ask you for that signature at the bottom... They're asking you to provide, they, they've asked you to provide certain evidence, and that signature is a, a verification, an attestation, an affirmation under penalties of perjury that you have provided evidence. You have provided evidence. Evidence of what? You have provided evidence yourself of the hearsay. They didn't need to do it, you did it. You did it yourself. However, there's an exception 
to the rule against hearsay. And when we go down to number 16, we see it says statements in ancient documents. A statement in a document that was prepared before January 1st, 1998, and whose authenticity is established. The Bible, folks, is the most prolifically published article under the, under the sun. As it is written... My apologies, folks. I had my... I don't know how long I've had this set up like this where you couldn't hear me. Let me try this. I'm going to learn from that. I hate putting out videos where you can't hear me because then they're just void videos. <clears throat> Let's see if I can do it this way. I really need some help on this shit. Damn it. Okay, let's do it like this. Anyway, it says, Statements in ancient documents, a statement in a document that was prepared before January 1st, 1998, and whose authenticity is established. We're not talking about certified documents here, folks. I've talked about this before. Whose authenticity is established. When we're talking about authenticity, we're talking about specific items, and we're going to go over that here in the next few minutes here when I show you these other things but as it's written so shall it be done what is done is what ought be done there is nothing new under the sun ancient documents is the biblical writings the torah the quran hinduism buddhism all of that stuff all of that stuff that tell us how to behave properly is a straight rebuttal anything they put down in their certifications which is hearsay the certification is false the certification is false for hearsay now you folks have heard me talking a lot lately about patents sorry about that again You've heard me talk about patents and things like that. I will figure this out here, folks. Give me a minute. Okay. <clears throat> You've heard me talking lately about patents and such. So let's look at patents. Before we get to patents, we have to look at franking. Blow this up so everybody can see it a little better. Franking, the action. Traitor in thought, but not in deed. Franking is the action of franking a letter or parcel. And then it says a franking machine. An official mark or signature. Remember those franking machines? A franking machine is something that leaves a franking mark. A postmark. And then it goes on to say an official mark or signature on a letter or parcel to indicate that postage has been paid or does not need to be paid. Again, if you guys have been paying attention, we have people out here that are using homemade postage stamps as frankings, their symbols. Again, I reiterate, Prince used a symbol, changed his name from the artist formerly known as Prince to a symbol. 
He used his franking powers to leave a mark or signature which is also construed as a logo, brand, symbol, autograph, patent. Latin is patentibus. Patentibus. And it stands for Open, evident, evidence, evidence, evident, clear, accessible, manifest, liquidous, liquid, watery, flowing, pure, fluid, patent, promptus, prompt, ready, willing, easy, plain, patent. In manifest, manifestus, conviction, convicted. We see that Vic right there. Victory. I'm already convicted to his words. I cannot be a traitor to them. Open, bare, clear, evident, patent, manifestus. This being the M-A-N-I is the male formative. Manufestus is the female formative. And it basically is the same thing. Manifest, evident, obvious, convicted, clear, patent. Apertus, open, clear, manifest, obvious, unveiled. Patent. As a noun, these are all adjectives. As a noun, diploma, letter of recommendation, Letter folded double. Letter folded double. Patent. Okay, that was the Latin root. Here we're going to go to the etymology online. And it shows open letter or official document from some authority granting permission to do something. First and foremost, the Bible is what is the thing that grants us what we do. A license granting an office, right, or title, etc. That is the traitor. That is the traitor. A shortened Form Anglo French letter patent, also in medieval Latin letter patents, literally open letter. From Old French patent, open, from Latin patentum, nominative patents, open, lying open. In other words, it's evident. The Bible is evident. Lie open, be open, to spread. Letters patent were. Written upon open sheets of parchment with the great seal pendant at the bottom. Interrupter there. <coughs> with the great seal pendant at the bottom while the literate clause or letters close being of a more private nature and addressed to one or two individuals only were closed or folded up and sealed on the outside. And I've shown you this before and I'm going to show you guys again. This is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. This is a letters closed. Remember we just heard in that definition, two folds? There's two folds. Letter closed. It's got the mark on it, the signature, the stamp, the franking. 
and it's got a seal. One is used as a stamp, one is used as a seal. That's the outside, the public side. The private side, the side that's closed, has another stamp. And you'll notice it's signed and dated, the contents of which is a letters closed, a letter of credit. Nobody else's business. Nobody else's business. So we go back to this and down at the bottom it says, meaning a license granted by a government covering a new and useful invention conferring exclusive right to exploit the invention for a specified term of years is from 1580s. Make full use of and derive benefit from a re source. A bold or daring, daring feat, deed, act, adventure, stunt, escape, escapade, maneuver. What is done is what ought be done. There is nothing new under the sun. You cannot license what is already patent. You cannot license what is already open and evident. Okay? Now let's go to latent. Concealed, secret, lying hid, concealed, secret, unknown, present participle of latir, lie hidden, lurk, to be concealed, from pi, late, suffix, relate, relate, suffix, form of root, laid, to be hidden, Source, also of Greek leith, forgetfulness, forgetfulness, oblivion, lethargus, forgetful, secretly by stealth, stealthy, to be hidden, old church Slavonic lajati, to lie in wait for, meaning dormant, undeveloped, Originally in medicine. Medicine. Medical treatment, cure, healing, substance used in treatment of a disease, medical, uh, medicinal potion or plaster, also used figurative of spiritual remedies. They say the medicine, medicine part here, today's common usage of the word medicine, but medicine has always been around as spiritual rem remedies. Medium, as in the middleman, as in the man between God and his person, the trustee. Medicine, art of healing, cure, treatment, potion, and directly from Latin medicina, the healing art, the healing art. This is perhaps originally Ars Medicina, the medical art of a doctor, a physician. Take appropriate measures. Take appropriate measures. 
though OED says evidence for this path is wanting and suggests derivation directly from Medicus. Medicus, the sense of practice, theory, or study of curing, alleviating, or preventing disease in humans. The practice is in a customs adopted by states to maintain good relations and mutual recognition. Pure and simple. And they're hiding it. They're making it all latent. They want that part hidden. They're saying you have to argue. You do not. You have a right of arbitration. means charter parties. Charter. The charter is already patent. My, my voyage, my mission in life is already charted by him. Pure and simple. And in that charter, I have what's called entree pro, entree po, which Entree po trade means or refers to a trade in one center for the goods of other countries. Merchandise can be imported and exported without paying import duties in entrepot trade. Because of favorable trade conditions, profit is possible in entree po trade. And that's U.S. legal. That's the U.S. legal definition. Now we're going to go to Wikipedia, or, uh, Investopedia. And we're not going to read the whole thing. We're just going to read this first, first uh, paragraph here. The term entrepot historically referred to a seaport or warehouse where goods would be imported for storage or trade before re-export. Okay. As I explained in my uh, videos yesterday and the day before, all jurisdictions extend from land, people. Every last one of them extends from land. Land jurisdiction is your superior jurisdiction. That's why it's called the force of the common law, the law of the land. Because if you want to have access to maritime law, you must first export from the land. We are not born on the water. We are born on the land. And we must first export to the water and we must then in order to re-import the going out and the coming back in we need a landing site the same with the air we need a landing site there are no such things as landing sites in the air and there are no such things as landing sites in the water it is either on the land or a landing pad on the water, which is not land. It gives you a seemingly reference safety port of land, but it is not land. And therefore, the safety of land can only be had by a landing. Period. Referred to a seaport or warehouse where goods would be imported for storage or trade. Storage or trade. And if it's storage, storage does not say for trade later, but it does not say for use either. So we have to read in between the lines. We may not be re-exporting it. So then we read the next part with no additional processing taking place and with no customs duties imposed. So... The term entrepot historically referred to a seaport or warehouse where goods would be imported for storage or trade or use. Whether or not re-exported. Their use, 
dates back to the days of long distance. Wind powered sea routes where they enabled traders to utilize part of a route to sell their goods without having to bear the risk and cost associated with long distance travel over an entire route. Now we're going to go to Wikipedia. Entrepot is a port. Entrepot or transshipment port. So Entrepot is the port. It's the place. It's you. Yourself is the port. Like I keep telling you people, you are the port master. You are the postmaster. You determine whether you want to trade. You decide whether you want to take that merchandise in or trade it, export it to someone else. And you can do so again with the state relationships. You have the right to go from one state and say I pick up uh, three dozen eggs as I'm traveling. I traded some guy for three dozen eggs. I happen to have three loaves of good bread in the in the the van, and uh, I can only use one in the immediate time. But I had to make the trade for three loaves, knowing that I could easily trade the other two loaves later, within the time before it expires. So I get to the next travel point, and I need some eggs, but I don't have any eggs to make me an egg sandwich. I got plenty of bread, so I can trade a couple loaves of bread for some eggs. No tax, folks. That's what Entrepot is. And they are violating that in every sense of the word, straight up, because of latent and patent. <coughs> when we talk about what's ours, what's proper to us and everything, we have to realize we're getting a lot of this stuff wrong, people. Because everything in their system, like I said, it's it's under uh, it, it's up for arbitration. An alternative dispute resolution. Resolute or absolute. Is it resolute or absolute? It's already absolute. Why do we need a resolution? Because they are operating in error. We need to correct their errors. No way about it. They will not do it. They continue to operate that way because it is profitable for them. Late 14th century. Unrestricted. Free from limitation. Complete. Perfect. Free from imperfection. Also, not relative to something else. The practices and customs adopted to, by states to maintain good relations and mutual recognition. And remember I said such as saluting the flag of a foreign ship. You raise the flag of the word of God and it is absolute. It is patent. They have already recognized it. They have already saluted it. Mid-15th century from Latin absolutus past participle of absolver to set free, acquit, complete, Bring to an end. Make separate. 
off, away from, to loosen, untie, release, detach. They have tied us to their port for all import and export reasons. We need to loosen and divide and cut apart from their port and realize we are our own ports. Since evolution probably was from detached, disengaged, to perfect, pure, meaning despotic. It is from a from notion of absolute imposition, absolute standing, not to be deposited. Absolute monarchy is recorded from 1735. Absolute king is recorded from 1610s. Grammatical sense is from late 18th or 14th century. Absolute magnitude is the brightness of a star. Would have at a distance of 10 parsecs. Scientific absolute value from 1907. As a noun metaphysics, the absolute, that which is unconditional or free from restrictions. The non-relative is from 1809. Okay? And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You set free. Acquit. It is absolute. I need no resolution. You need to fix your records. Period. Because I cannot be charged for my post under his command, and therefore I expose your Latin or your latent secrets, which are openly discussed by the authority granting me permission to do so. The action of franking a letter or parcel, an official marker's signature on a letter or parcel to indicate that postage has been paid or does not need to be paid. I need no postage. I need to pay no postage on anything that I that I am on the, in the ministry uh, to spread in any form, whether it be through the air, land, or water. You cannot refuse me from expressing the ministry of his words in any form to my neighbors near or far in any form i am not being taxed i'm not being taxed for sending these words across this forum how is there a means for being taxed for me being able to write them down and put two folds on them seal it and send it off there isn't as I showed you. The problem is, you're using other people's ships, you're using other people's stamps, you're using other people's languages, you're using other people's numbers, you're using other people's codes. Why? Get back to the source, and you'll see how all of that stuff mirrors what is already patented. Every last bit of it. Your travel rights, Two verses in the Bible. <clears throat> As I said, imports and exports. The going out and the coming in. Psalms 121 verse 8. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, comma, and even forevermore. See, there is no timeline, so their dates don't matter. Period. Leviticus 25, verse 23. The land is mine. The land shall... It's, it, it starts out, it says, The land is mine. And sh uh, the land... No, wait, let me get this right. The land shall not be sold forever, for it is mine. And ye are so strangers and sojourners with me. So if I send my words in a vessel that I constructed, that I have patent rights, franking privileges, to have certain things open and certain things latent, 
No one else has the right to interfere with that perfect communication. They have no right to make it imperfect by costing it, by charging it. It already has the energy it needs. Pure and simple. Plain and simple. Anyway, that's about enough for me. I didn't want to make it too long because, again, like I said, a lot of people have a hard time uh, keeping up with all this. So I'll go through, I'll copy these links down, I'll put them in the post when I get done doing the video here, I'll put them in the comment section. And then like always, I'll post my other forum links in the uh, top of the uh, post along with the uh, title of the post so anybody can check out the other forums, the information and videos, please share them. But please pay attention, I've also got a new MeWe link, so check me out there, as well as hit that PayPal button. S send some love, I could always use it. Like I said, I'm having problems, difficulty. If I had a nice little stand where I could put the phone up and, and show the video without having to use my hand and cover the mic, I forget that all the time. So I apologize for uh, parts of the videos that you guys can't hear. Um, but again, remember, none of that PayPal stuff matters. Whether you're going to share this information doesn't matter. My duty to begin with, whether you share that or not, whether you share through the PayPal link or not, my duty is to keep sharing this information regardless of who's listening. That's my duty. So hopefully you guys will help out in those different areas. But in the meantime, again, remember, if it's not for you, I wouldn't be doing this because I no longer need it. I already have it here. So I'm just trying to pass that message from here to there free of charge. That's all it should take. If you're not getting it, find out if who, who's imperfecting it. Find out who's causing the imperfections. Is it a mailman? Is it yourself? Most often it's ourselves. So think about that and remember again, people, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be doing this. God bless. I love you. Please hit that PayPal link. Hit them other forum buttons and share them. Thanks. Bye-bye.